Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill bringing you another Let's Build a Mission. So in the previous course, um, I did mention as we went over the FARP that I was going to uh, be adding some more to it. So I have gone ahead and done so. Um, now to help you guys catch up here, um, I just added a few more static objects sort of, oh excuse me, <sighs> bring everything to life a little bit. And um, you know, um, our outpost is still the same, but something I did was added these cargoes that you can actually use the Hilo to pick up and, uh, or the Huey, I should say, actually really any of the helicopters, I think, um, to pick up and transport. So I sort of created this little um, scene over here, um, and then you can pick objects up and take them over to the airfield over here and drop them off. And we'll be adding more to that later, so that way, you know, you get some sort of credit or you know, there's some sort of actual mission objective, you know, when doing so. Um, now, one of the things that we're going to go over today, now that we have that set up, and by the way, I'm going to have a link in the description below that will give you an, a current version of the mission at this point, okay? So, moving in here, um, one of the things that we are going to work on is surface-to-air missile systems, okay? Um, especially with the practice areas like this um, <coughs> excuse me gosh I'm all over the place tonight with the practice missions like this um, I like to make sure that we have uh, enough surface to air defense that way if someone's just training you know and we ever go full multiplayer I don't think any of my guys would ever do this you know the squadron they're all pretty pretty straight up dudes but if we ever decide to go with public service for example or if you were the wanting to host one you know, something you'd want to avoid is um, having, uh, you know, someone from Red 4 come and mess with the training area. You know, this is just a practice on the whole idea behind this zone is so people can practice comfortably and not worry about getting shot down in this zone. So we want to make sure it's heavily defended from any kind of incursion. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the templates. And I'm going to add template. And I can't remember if I added these guys or if these are in here by default. So make sure you check for these. Um, you'll see the Hawk Sam battery reinforced, Hawk Sam battery, and the Patriot site. Um, I think these are in here by default. I think um, uh, for USA or for Blue 4. I think DCS already had these. So let's go ahead and use the uh, Sam battery. And the Hawk 3 is what we're looking at. And so we're just going to thunk it down right there. Okay. Now I do want to go over what has to be consisted of or the complement to make a successful Hawk 3 system. So here we have our launchers. Each launcher has three missiles on it. Okay. Once those three missiles run out, they're empty. Okay. Then you have the um, Hawk targeting radar. So this is what is the search radars and continuous wave radar actually hand off to it. Okay, and then here you have the PCP, which is sort of the command center of this of the environment, if you will. Okay, controls the whole shebang. You have another search radar, which actually searches the area for targets, and then you have the continuous wave radar, acquisition radar. Okay, so it's got two forms of acquisition. You have this uh, search radar, which um, my understanding is used for high altitude tracking, and then the continuous wave acquisition radar is used more for the low altitude zone. And then both of these hand their target off to the targeting radars and you know your missile is launched okay so these are the requirements for a SAM site now you do not have to have this many launchers you can have one launcher you can have 12 launchers it's up to you the biggest thing is if you ever find that um, you know you've if you've spread them out really far and you find that all of a sudden it's not working chances are you have your units too far apart they can't be too far apart you know this is this is pretty pretty good for for what the system is you know and you can still pick up the the one unit, move it around, and this is just for the SA-3. So let's go ahead and we're going to put this guy, let's put him over here. Okay, so there's one right there. And we're going to do Cobaletti Hawk 1, because we're going to do more than one. All right, so there's Hawk 1. And then I'm just going to control C this group because it's already titled the way I want. And let's put another one in here, maybe back over here. Okay. And we'll change this to Hawk 2. And let's do maybe one more. Let's do one more by the FARP. 
Do we want one by the far? Let's see. Let's look at the area for a second. Got one here, one here. That pretty much covers almost any incursion. We'll put one more over here by the farm. Why not? Boom. And there's a hawk system there. Okay. And the Patriot system is the big dog. Okay. For the blue four. The Patriot system can reach out and touch someone up to, I think, 40,000 feet. And it fires. I can't remember what the distance is, but a ridiculous ways away. Um, long before you're in firing range, typically, um, unless you're using like the, uh, well, I suppose that's not true anymore with the cruise missiles and everything that's available now, but still. Um, so let's go ahead and just go nuts. Let's add a Patriot. And this thing is crazy. Absolutely freaking crazy. Um, this is definitely going to be a well-defended base. I'll tell you what. Uh, maybe that's overkill. Ah, see what I did there? Let's put the Patriot system... I'll tell you what, let's do this. We're going to put the Patriot system here. Get rid of this one. I think we're going to ditch this guy. Let's change the name of this one to two. So we got two Hawk systems and a Patriot system. So the Hawk systems will be for when they're in close and low, and the Patriot's going to reach out and touch everybody else. So again, you have... Um, your Patriot launchers, and we need to change this to Patriot. And it's going to be your only one, but I always put a number on it just in case I get froggy. So you have all your launchers right here. Then we have, oop, hello. We have one. These are your acquisition radars your command centers, and I don't remember what all of these mean, but so you need all of these. And then there's our search and targeting radar. They're, in, they're combined there. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to pretend to know what all of these do, guys. I just don't. Now, something you can do if you get froggy is you can come here to the encyclopedia. You can go to the air defense systems here and you can go and search all of those uh, devices. But uh, yeah, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to tell you guys the units that I just displayed have to be there in order for the system to operate. Okay, all right, so we got our Patriot system. We have two Hawk systems, so we're ready there. Let's do a tanker and a AWACS, okay? So let's do our AWACS first. We're gonna put an AWACS here. We're gonna make sure we select the USA. Now AWACSs, you want them to be up really high, um, and in a position where, you know, they can't get hit. Now, <clears throat> for our sake, you know, because um, my guys pretty much are just going to be flying AI. So we're going to make the AWAC so it can't be destroyed. But let's do this. So we're going to do, let's put them up at 32,000 feet. And all I'm going to do is come here and change the task to AWACS. And it brings up an E2D, which is the one from the carrier. That's an E2, but we want the E3. Okay, we're gonna use the big boy. All right, and we'll just call this AWAX Blue 4, okay? And we're gonna put his skills excellent. And let's set a waypoint this time. We do actually want one. And the second you bounce to a different menu, it will automatically switch to edit. So we're gonna go add. And let's have him go Mm, kind of here, all right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the first waypoint. This is where we're going to add some things. We're going to go add, perform task, and orbit. We want him to go back and forth, right? We want him to circle. So you want the racetrack. You have a circle, which in a circle, what he would do is at this waypoint, he'll just do a very tight orbit over this waypoint. What we want is racetrack. So anytime you want a racetrack and you've only got two waypoints or whatever waypoint you have it set to, you want... If you want to set racetrack, you want to select the waypoint previous. So, for example, if I, let's delete this for a second. If I go to waypoint one, this last waypoint, and I go to orbit, notice that only circle is available because there isn't a waypoint for him to move forward to racetrack. Okay, so <clears throat> you always need to make sure that if you want that racetrack, so he's going to fly to here and then come back here and come back, you have to be on the starting waypoint, okay? So let's go back to, we're going to delete this because we don't want him to do that. Back to zero. 
So our starting waypoint, go to orbit, racetrack. Um, let's set it for like, let's go 290 knots. Okay. All right. So now when we start, he's going to circle. The other thing we want to adjust is our frequency if you want. Um, let's make it uh, 262 megahertz, right? And we're going to even change the pilot name to AWAX in case for any reason we need to make any triggers for the AWAX, we have that available. Now, let's make it so he can't be seen by enemy AI, because I don't want the enemy AI shooting him down. The whole point of, because it's something that you'll find out with, with hostile AI, with the computer AI, is they could be flying over here and as soon as they detect it, they go after it. And sometimes the trigger of making them ignore it will work and sometimes it won't. So it's better just to set it like this. So what we're going to do is go perform command and we want invisible. And this means that he cannot be seen by any AI traffic. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing we can do is set him to immortal. So now he can also not be shot down if they happen to, you know, for whatever reason, find him. All right. And we don't need to name it or anything like that. It's totally up to you. Conditions we'll get into later. Those are for trigger actions. We don't need that. Okay. All right. Now, let's do this. I'm actually going to have him set sort of like this. All right, so now we have an AWACS up in the air. Now, and by the way, they can fly for hours and hours. And what I'm going to show you guys how to do, like if this is a server mission like I'm building, is we'll set a time limit where after X amount of hours, the server will restart. And by the end of this, I will show you guys how to use a script that will actually give either you as the player or an admin or automatically have this guy reset. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to set this guy here and then we're going to add a waypoint. Oops, wrong one. Not a waypoint action. We're going to click on the waypoint one. Let's go to add. And we're going to have him go to Sakumi and land when he's done. So after he's run out of fuel, okay, and he needs to go home, we're going to set this to landing. And notice that once I did that, I identified this as a blue reference, it automatically made Sakumi a blue airfield. Okay. So we've automatically set it so where he's going to orbit and orbit and orbit and orbit and orbit. And then once he gets low on fuel, he gets on bingo fuel, he's going to turn and come home. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get a tanker in. And a tanker, we're basically going to set up the exact same thing. Oops, didn't want to do that. And you have to watch. If you ever do that on accident, notice it changed what this waypoint was. So we want to set it back to landing, go to edit, and jump off. Now, cool part is what we're going to do is actually use this aircraft. And we're going to change a few things, but we're going to copy him over. Let's change his altitude down to 20,000. Okay. And then cycle to the waypoint. And same thing. Okay. And let's change his frequency to, I don't know, 265. Let's get real original here. And what we're going to do with this guy is we want refueling. There it is. And we're going to change this to the KC-135 MPRS. Okay, so this is um, anything that's got the boom. Okay, the fuel probe that comes out of the nose. This is the tanker that's going to be able to fill it. And so we're going to change this over to Texaco. is the pilot name that's been assigned. And we're going to change this to Texaco again. And what I like to do is identify it. So we're going to go MPRS. And we're going to grab this, wipe it out. The blue four can stay. Now, what we will have already is we're going to have the orbit. Let's change the altitude. Okay, good, good. Everything looks good there. But we're also going to have a tack end. So let's do, I like to do the back end of the frequency. Oh, it took my frequency away. What the hell? That was weird. Give me that back. What did we say? Two, six, three, whatever. Anyway, so I'll take the last two of the frequency. So six, three X-ray and TXO for Texaco. Bind it to Texaco. And then I always cycle through my waypoints, make sure there isn't anything weird. Okay, cool. And other than that, he's going to have the exact same advantages. So we have the invisible on, the orbit, or the immortal on, so we don't have to worry about AI coming in to get him. And honestly, we're going to set this up where we have complete control of the AI. But anyway. Um, and now, when you figure you're only at a you know, 
75 miles, you know, from the tanker. So whether we come out and go this way, you know, no matter which direction we go, we can come back and hit the tanker. And if you want, you can move it around if you're worried about that kind of thing. So we can do, we can even do this, right? So let's move them around a little bit. That way, if we're practicing AAR, you know, it's not too big of a hop from the practice field. Um, and then the, the more combative areas, you know. Um, what I'll typically do is set up like, and we may set up another tanker. Um, we will do, like I plan on making sort of this area in here, like a World War II zone. Okay, area over here, a live modern warfare zone, or maybe even like up in here, and go into these realms, right? So there's a lot we have to do here. There's a lot we can do. So, all right. So we've gone over how to create a tanker now. And we can do the same thing. Let's make a KC-130, okay? Or, uh, no, sorry, we don't want a KC-130. Let's make a uh, standard KC-135. This is gonna be an air, uh, the tanker that has the boom on it. And let's put that over here, because that's gonna be an Air Force fighter, right? So the Air Force, we're gonna have them come out of like Tbilisi. So let's grab our tanker. And let's see here. So we're going to have this a combat zone, kind of. So let's put our tanker maybe here. All right. And again, let's get him up to like, let's do this one at 22,000 feet because we got that mountain range. It's pretty close. All right. And we're going to do, I know one of the options is Arco. So we're going to do Arco 135. Blue four, even though it's, I mean, actually, I suppose we could put one of the other tankers on red four because we have the aggressors. Um, we're going to do excellent. Let's make this guy 271. Let's get real crazy here, right? And let's do, oh, we got to change this to refueling. So let's switch that over. Let's change this guy to the 135. Okay, so we got the, uh, the boom. Oh, that's what changed it. 271. All right. We got the KC-135, we got refueling set, we got ARCO-135. All right, and we need to get a waypoint in for him, so let's go ahead and slap that in there. We're gonna throw it in like this, okay? And then go back to our original waypoint. And let's go ahead and set the TAC can up here since it's already here. And again, I'm gonna use the last two digits of the frequency, so 7-1. And this is gonna be ARC and Pilot-1, which you can change this afterwards, so if we do ARCO now, Okay, you don't have to come back here and select anything again. As soon as you exit out of it, come back into it. Oh, did I just lie to you? There it is. Now it says it. Okay. All right, let's do the same thing. So we're going to go perform command invisible. And we're going to do perform command immortal. That way it can't be shot down and it can't be, um, what you call it, uh, detected. So... We're not going to worry about anything else here. You don't have to worry about telling it to turn the activate tack in because that comes with it on default, okay, on that first waypoint. What we do still need to set is our orbit. So we're going to go perform task again, go to orbit, racetrack, and let's set it for 300 knots, not 3,000. All right, so we're going to orbit at 300 knots at 22,000 feet, all right, on a frequency of 271 with a tack in of 71 X ray. And arc as the identifier so we'll have all that and you always and we'll do a briefing later you always want to make sure you set up your briefings that have all this information in it otherwise your squad mates will yell at you for not having any clue which tanker to call not that that's ever happened to me i would never make such a mistake okay <clears throat> all right guys so that's pretty much it for this one i showed you guys how to what is necessary to set up a hawk 3 which is a low altitude medium range um, surface to air missile and then we have the Patriot long range, um, high altitude, uh, medium to high altitude Patriot missile system. Okay. And then we talked about how to set up effectively a AWACS and how to set up the tankers, both the KC-135 MPRS, which is used for any aircraft that has the refueling probe, which really is all of your naval aircraft. And then your, so your F, for right now, your F-18, your F-14, the A-4, if you're using that mod, um, and the, I feel like I'm missing one, the JF-17, I think, uses the fueling, pro fueling probe, too. 
Um, and then the KC-135 that we put over here is going to be your F-15, F-16, A-10, uh, pretty much anything else. If it doesn't have a probe and boom that sticks out of it, it goes for this bird here. All right. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave it in the field below and I'll address it in the next one. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Please let me know in the comments what you guys are thinking. If this is helping, is it not helping? Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast? Um, I really want to give you guys the power to create your own missions. So please, please, please let me know. Until next time, guys, as always, stay safe, stay healthy. See you soon.